Good morning, third year students. How are my third years doing? Uh, I hope you are taking good care of yourself and your family. These are testing times, but of course this too shall pass and you will have to face your examinations sometime in the near future. Uh, please prepare yourself well with whatever accessibility that you have. Uh, try to make use of it. So. Uh, this morning we are going to discuss the short story by Mahashweta Devi titled Draupadi uh, which has been translated into English by Gayatri Chakravarti Spiva and is uh, one of the stories in her collection known as Breast Stories. So the title of the anthology itself is suggestive of a very strong undertone of female body. Uh, one can easily make out that it is a story about women and their body we come to the when we come to the, the story of course the name itself Draupadi it is heavily uh, it has a very heavy undertone uh, of uh, the famous uh, myth that we all celebrate the Mahabharata. In the myth, uh, Draupadi was, of course, the the princess who had to marry five husbands. So she was the uh, wife of the Pandavas, uh, brutally insulted in the gambling hall by the Kauravas. Of course, it was the her husbands who actually. Uh, gave her away in the gambling. So that is the story of Draupadi who has who eventually is saved by Lord Krishna uh, from the uh, from the loss of self-dignity uh, from the violation of her bodily rights that was taking part in that gambling hall where only the male members were present uh, but of course in the story Draupadi by Mahashweta Devi, there is the subversion of the myth. We will come to that later. I'm just giving you a, a, a small gist. Uh, and she is not saved by any man, uh, but she somehow says something or does something uh, that makes uh, that that is uh, one one of the greatest or strongest form of resistance to patriarchal society uh, that uh, worked uh, in the form of police brutality in this case. Now, when we talk about the political and historical background of the story, uh, it is uh, it, it is based on the nuptial uprising of 1967. It is also known as the Spring Uprising. It was a tribal peasant uprising that um, shook the entire uh, state of West Bengal, uh, and many young minds, young college students, were very much inspired by this movement, inspired by this socialist movement against uh, state oppression. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, the main character, Dupti, uh, who belongs to the Munda tribe, is also one of, uh, one of the uh, very active comrades in this uprising. And one, uh, one person who the police uh, is uh, very much in search of. And when the story begins, we come to know that her husband Dhulna has already been captured. Uh, now the important uh, thing about the story is, of course, when, we, uh, when the story opens to us, uh, we see the police personals uh, talking about uh, this, uh, the, these uh, uh, so-called notorious uh, uh, tribal uh, uh, leaders and one of them is Dupti and uh, then uh, they also discuss when they are 
discussing her background they say that she was born in the time when her mother was uh, threshing rice uh, so we will come to that later on but it's very important so the landlord has named her uh, Draupadi or Dopti and it is not clear whether she is Draupadi or Dopti maybe perhaps uh, the peasants are not able to pronounce her Sanskrit name properly or maybe it is how Draupadi is pronounced in the tribal language that is not very sure so the important part uh, aspect out here is uh, she has been ru running uh, she has been in hiding and the police uh, is uh, doing their best to hunt her down uh, and uh, she has been running through the Jharkhani forest uh, being helped by many people uh, but uh, somehow they get hold of her uh, and uh, when she comes under the police custody uh, the chief officer is of course Senanayak, a very important character in the story. And uh, Senanayak orders uh, his uh, army personals to uh, fix her up and she is brutally raped. But the climax of the story is when the sun rises the next morning the way she has been raped the entire night by many men uh, the the one of the police personals asks her to cover her body a naked body and uh, she refuses to do so and then sena nayak says you have don't you have any shame there are so many men around and her answer is appalling, appalling to such an extent that even in the story it is said that uh, the men were terribly shocked at her statement because she says with her naked, bruised body bitten by these men, she proclaims that there are no men to be ashamed of where are the men where are men that I need to be ashamed of so with this questioning of very tough interrogation on masculinity that is very much uh, very much encouraged uh, by um, by by certain state agencies uh, the book or the story ends so that is the summary of the book oh, sorry the story now we come to another important aspect of the uh, story and that is how can it be called a story uh, based on third world feminism a very important term third world feminism we have discussed black feminism we discussed white feminism of course we began with white feminism the three waves of feminism in the western country we we in your earlier of course when you were doing your fifth sem correct me if i'm wrong or fourth sem we did do, do mrs dalloway you did start with virginia wolf so when somebody starts with virginia wolf it means you you have a fair uh, a fair idea about white feminism the western feminism uh, that has been dealt with and then in this section the women's writing itself you did um, emily dickinson and sylvia plath so you've uh, again discussed first world feminism this time in the form of poetry uh, then we came to Alice Walker's Color Purple where we discussed black feminism and now we are in doing third world feminism when we have to discuss Draupadi. Now what is third world feminism? According to Gayatri Chakraborty Spivak, uh, 
third world feminism uh, can be termed as the story or perspective of a women who are from the developing countries with their own issues that need to be dealt that can be different from the issues uh, that bother first world feminists now when we discuss when we were discussing black feminism itself i said that women are always twice marginalized when it comes to black feminism look at the world of celie she is she suffers because one she is a black and she uh, is defranchised uh, she is powerless and two because she is a woman now here too if you we did we discussed when we were discussing draupadi we discussed the political and historical background so this entire story is set up in a war ravaged if i can use the term war uh, or, or you 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 can uh, say a, a conflict that will be a better word i think a conflict ravaged area region where the, the, there is constant clash between the guerrillas guerrilla fighters uh, fighting for their rights and the state machinery the police administration uh, tr trying to uh, balance uh, trying to uh, make a balance tr trying to uh, bring in harmony as uh, ordered by the state so what happens to a woman out here first and the foremost dupti is a peasant uh, a tribal peasant uh, who uh, b belongs if if you look at it uh, from uh, from uh, class uh, perspective belongs to lower class the fringes of society and that is her class uh, that makes her uh, have no right Uh, she suffers uh, from being voiceless and added to that she is a woman so when a peasant who who is an active participant in the uprising is uh, is uh, somehow uh, captured by the police uh, he will be beaten up but the consequences of a woman uh, uh, a, a woman uh, activist being caught is that she will not only be beaten up she will be raped she will be uh, she will be snatched away her sorry her dignity will be snatched away her body will be ravaged so that is what gayatri chakravarti spivak means by twice marginalized and i already told you third world third world are all the developing countries with our own issues our own problems our own uh, uh, we you know when we talk about third world feminism please go back to your uh, 100 years of solitude that is uh, in semester 5 Uh, we talked about how all of us are colonized uh, we are in between we are neither uh, we we are never free from our uh, col colonial uh, mindset uh, we have not decolonized ourselves uh, okay if even if we decolonized our mind economically we will always be colonized because it is a tough capitalist market out there and we are the consumers of the first world country so there are so many layers we have our own struggles perhaps struggles that are very different from first world women because they they do of course uh, we are not saying that they don't have their own struggles they they are also struggling with their patriarchal setup and we are also struggling with our patriarchal setup added to that a lot of 
uh, own issues that uh, the the issues that third world countries have to grapple with nevertheless third world has its own political issues and i'm not just talking about the female i'm talking about third world in general and what are what are the issues like we discussed in 100 of years of solitude there there there, there is inner conflict uh, the the centuries of colonialism that uh, that handicap the economy and then again depending on the west uh, when it comes to ep economy economic setup because it's a cutthroat capitalist economic setup where there is only survival of the fittest uh, then there is also this struggle to decolonize our own mind as Rashti says and don't know when we will be able to do so so here what is happening this is the general third world problem and of course there is a woman in the middle of all that so a woman a being a woman she will be she will find uh, she will be experiencing twice marginalization because she is she is a part and parcel of the third world identity and she is also a woman so that is what third world feminism is and one such example is dopti or the main female protagonist um, of the short story uh, who is an active member of this guerrilla um, um, of this um, guerrilla uh, uh, fighting uh, group uh, that that is uh, a resistance group against the state.